Hello viewers, thank you for watching another video from Accentuate. Now this is part 2 of the previous video, how to create client and supplier. We realized that in the first part of the video, we have forgotten to teach you how to create a supplier. So we are going to cover it in this particular section itself. And on top of that, we are also going to cover a little bit more features and functions. So let's move into the software. Now once you log into the software, you should see this screen. If not, most likely, um, like what I mentioned in the previous video, you might have ended up in other modules, calendar module or whichever other places it is, it really doesn't matter. You just need to go to the top left hand corner, you click on this icon itself, it will return you all the way back to the main menu itself. So in this main menu, you see all the modules that is available to you. We would like to go to sales and of course under the sub menu sales, you want to click on customers. Now as you go to customers, you will see all the customers that you have in the system and in our case, we have already created Demo Company Private Limited. So I would like to click into this one and once you click into it, it shows you the detail of this particular customer and of course who are all the relevant contacts that is relevant to this company itself. So I would like to touch on how can we create a supplier. So to create a supplier is really easy, just click on sales and purchase. Now how we do it is that for every client that we create or every contact that we create, the system actually differentiates the contact just by enabling whether it's a vendor, not a vendor, is a client, not a client. So it is really that simple, it is just checking on and off whether is it a client, whether is it a vendor. Now the reason why this system is designed in such a way, it is really because there are many systems out there whereby they keep a separate list of clients as compared to vendors and what that actually create is that uh, when you create a list of customers and if your customer happen to be also your vendor, then unfortunately you will have to create another vendor that is exactly the same as your client. So that is actually double work for the admin itself. So in our system, we want to eliminate that so for the same person or company, we allow you to indicate to say whether it is a customer or is it a vendor or are they both, right? So I mean they must be either one, if not then uh, there's really no purpose in creating this contact as well. So once we are done with sales and purchase, let's move on tab by tab from internal notes to sales and purchase later on again. And then finally we want to talk about accounting to finish off the whole uh, video itself. So let's go to internal notes. Under internal notes, uh, there's actually two sections over here. The first section is internal note. The second section is delivery instructions. So obviously, it's actually already pretty well descriptive over here. You should already know what to key in if let's say there's information to be captured. So I just want to bring to your attention that this is not the only place that you can keep internal notes. If you scroll down to the bottom of this page itself, you actually see what we call the chatter. Now when you are at the chatter, this is what we call also the audit trail. So why do we call it the audit trail? The system actually automatically captures information of uh, captures activity that is being done to this particular document itself. And in this case, it is the details of this company. So as you can see, the system captured that four hours ago, we created this contact. Then of course, uh, just now I was actually adding in some internal notes over here. So you can add internal notes up here. You can add internal notes down here. The difference is that whatever that you add up here can be edited along the way. If let's say you decide that this, there are actually more items or more information that you wanted, then you can actually edit the internal notes up here. But for notes that you would like to keep forever and you do not want people to delete or to edit it, you should keep it at the bottom over here. This is what we call the chatter. So in order to do that, all you need to do is you click log an internal note and then you key in whatever you want to log over here. Let's say for example, client is going to get another office. Let's say for example. So once you log the note, it will not be editable. So do make sure that you have it correct. And if you like to add smiley, we actually have got some smiley faces for you to add over here. Let's say for example, you want to add maybe this one. And if you like to attach a file, you can click on the paper clip button itself. And as you click the paper clip button, 
you can actually select the file that you want to add and that's about it for the internal node so once you are done you just log and you'll be captured here for the entirety of this particular client also if let's say this client is someone that is really interesting to your team members and you would like your team members to follow whatever changes that uh, have been made to the client itself you can actually come to the bottom over here and click on this little fella and when you click on this a small little menu comes up and you can say you want to add followers and when you click on this it actually pops up a menu for you to say uh, who you want to add let's say for example you want to add another person within your company to have access to this so let's say for example I would like to add Boomping to follow this particular client so you can key in the email address and if you like this person to be informed to say that hey I've invited you to follow you can keep this tick over here on if not if you do not want to disturb him then you just untick this and then once you are done you just click add followers so then you realize that uh, two person will be following this document and of course if let's say you want to remove a person then you just highlight the person and you click on the X button over here now since we allow you to key in the email address of the company itself it is not for nothing if you come down to the bottom if let's say you want you would like to keep all your communication centralized in one platform you can actually send messages from the system to your client so as you do it how do you do it you just click on this button itself new message and then you can just start typing the message that you want to send it to your client if you want to view it in a rich text format you can actually click on this button over here it will give you the rich text format of um, of the editor itself so you can edit up whatever you want to send let's say for example hi we are working on the quotation please stay tuned regards can so if let's say you would like to attach a file you can attach a file here if not then you can just click send and of course the system will automatically send out the email to this company and of course as it sends out the email to the company it will also keep it inside the audit trail so if in the future you come back to see what has been communicated to, to the client they will all be in the chatter box itself and of course as we refresh the page you can see that the person that we have added into the um, into the conversation itself will appear here so Boomping has not appeared here yet but the company has appeared here now you would like to the next thing we would like to do is to go to sales and purchase so under sales and purchase uh, this is the part where I've mentioned just now setting as a client as well as the vendor so over here you are able to assign if let's say you have got five or ten salesperson and you would like to assign clients to these people to follow up you can actually select uh, your relevant salesperson over here and you can assign it accordingly to those people also if let's say you have got several delivery methods and each delivery method has got a different cost to it this is where you can select your delivery methods itself you can create more by clicking create and edit if not then you can select one so I will not create a delivery method in this video there is uh, going to be another video by itself uh, do look for that video if let's say this particular option is important to you we are able to do price list settings as well price list is actually a very very powerful mechanism within our software which is also one of the strength of our software compared to our competitors so you are able to create multiple price lists and assign price lists to clients so how do we actually use price lists for example you have got normal clients versus long-term clients so for some companies long-term clients they actually give a 5 or 10 percent discount con consistently so you can actually create a 10 percent discount price list and then you assign that 10 percent discount price list to your long-term client so regardless of who is serving this client whether your salesperson is new or your sales salesperson is experienced each time they create the quotation it will automatically use the 10 percent discount price list and you'll never get the price wrong you are able to add in internal notes over here internal reference let's say for example this client is referred 
to by John so we can use this uh, in this particular manner and that's about it for sales and purchase let's go to the accounting module itself now when you go to the accounting part of this section I highly encourage that if let's say you are not accounting trained try not to touch any of these items that is at the bottom if not uh, it can actually cause some changes some unwanted changes but if let's say you are accounting trained then by all means you can uh, proceed to watch our accounting training videos and you can learn how to use physical information as well as uh, the accounts receivable and accounts payable uh, information over here for the normal users what you would like to do is that sometimes you would like to assign customer payment terms to the customer itself so as you create invoices it will automatically extract out the default payment term for the client so in this case let's say let's say we want to use a 15 day payment term so we select 15 day and because this client is also our vendor and our vendor has agreed to give us a 30 day term so we can select 30 days so as we key in the invoices of our vendor uh, the system will automatically say that the due date is in 30 days time so for the degree of trust you have in this debtor this is actually just an indicator uh, to whether this is a good debtor, bad debtor or a normal one so this is just for uh, indicating purposes now you are able to create messages to go with your payment terms but there is going to be another tutorial in another video you can look for our payment term tutorial and we'll teach it to you in that video itself so all in all we have covered most of the uh, information that we have under creating of clients uh, over here now one last part that I would like to point out to you is that on the top right hand corner you see these small little boxes these are what we call the smart buttons the smart buttons actually give you a summary view of all the transactions that we have with this client up to date so meaning to say if let's say we are going to set a meeting with this client um, once we set a meeting you will see that this number jumps to one if you have set the second appointment then this number jumps to two these figures are all accumulative so it actually allows you to see uh, how valuable this particular client is so if you have got uh, if you have issued your client with invoices so it will be accumulated here as well you'll be able to see the total figure sales represents quotations and sales orders meetings we have already mentioned purchases if let's say you have activated this vendor this particular client to be a vendor it will appear with these two options over here to say purchases as well as vendor bills so this is where uh, you'll be able to see the accumulated uh, figures as you move on in your journey in business now once we are done with creating all the client we would like to click on save and once we save up we can go back to the main menu which is the customer menu now I'd like to go back in again to show you something if you look at the system itself you realize that our system actually tracks where you are and where you come from so where do you see that piece of information you come to the top left hand corner of the software you will see this small little uh, uh, directory itself this is what we call the breadcrumbs so currently we are actually in the details of demo company private limited to go one step backwards you can actually retrace your steps by going one step backward over here so we came from the customer view so to go back just click on customer and we are back in the customer view itself now one one more thing that I would like to share with you that is something really really neat that our system has is that for every client that we have you are able to tag our clients so let's say for example this particular client uh, is interested as a components buyer they are also interested to buy IT services so we can tag the client accordingly so how do we add tags to client let's go back to our demo company and in this case let's say for example this particular customer is also interested in components so under this tag section you can actually key in components and as you key in partially uh, you will actually trigger uh, whatever matching items that comes out over here you can actually just select it and let's say for example they are also interested in IT services you can just key in IT services then you select now let's say for example they are also interested in websites so you select website and it will appear over here 
So as you can see, these little tags, they are all color coded. So let's say for example, I do not want my website to be orange in color. I would like it to be say green in color. So you just click on the tag itself and select green. So each time a customer is being tagged under website, it will actually so show this particular color itself. So at one look in your Kanban view or rather in your card view. So let's go one step back. You realize that currently this client has been tagged with three interesting, interested options. So this customer is interested in components, they are interested in IT services, and in particular, uh, the website itself. So at one look, if let's say you are familiar with all your tags, you are able to see what your clients are interested in just by looking at the color coding. So to create a new tag, you can actually just edit up uh, the client over here. And as you click the drop down button, you can actually click on search more. So when you click on search more, you see all the options, all the tags that you already have within the system. You might, for your system itself, you might have you might have no tags at all because yours might be a fresh system. So you can start creating the tags. So let's say for example, you want to create a tag, let's say e-commerce. And if let's say this tag is actually a subcategory of some other tag itself, you can actually select a parent category to go with. So in this particular case, let's say for example, it goes with IT services. So this is how you uh, actually categorize and you actually do a hierarchy to all your tags itself. So once you're done, you can save. And of course, if let's say you want to color code it, you can color code it. So let's say for example, e-commerce, let's give it pink color. And once you're done, let's just save it and go back to our card view. And you realize that this customer is also coded to be interested in e-commerce services so this is a pretty nice view itself but as clients grow this view is going to out you are going to outgrow this view itself so in order to go back to the traditional view you can click on the top right hand corner there's two buttons over here you can click on the list view and it actually goes back to list view this is your traditional view which uh, most of us should be very familiar with because many systems actually give you um, list view so if you like to further man manipulate the view you can actually click on the magnifying glass on the top right hand corner and you have got the options to do filtering so there are many options that you can play around with you can actually just um, look at what are the options you have and start doing some grouping and start doing some filtering and you'll be surprised at how all these features can become really really useful now one last thing that i want to point out is if let's say you want to do a search let's say for example cam to cam you will realize that as you do a search this small little menu drops down now this is actually a quick search tool for you because as you do a search you can be searching for a name you can be searching for a tag you can be searching for a salesperson and of course many more right so do take note that you might not want to just key in something and just press enter if you key something and just press enter it always do the search based on the default that it is being set to you can also do a search based on text by scrolling down the list we have just now let's say for example e-commerce e-commerce is actually a tag so you can actually use your arrow button to move downwards to say on to search for the company that has been tagged e-commerce so as you press enter all the company that has been tagged to be interested in e-commerce actually comes out so let's say for example IT services we want to search a tag for IT services then all IT services uh, companies actually comes out uh, in the list itself so this is actually pretty neat you might want to maximize these functions to help you navigate around your customer list as your customer number grow uh, in figures so that's about it for the training video Thank you so much for watching this video and if let's say you have got any questions, we always welcome you to write in to us via our website. You can actually send an inquiry email to us and our engineers will read the email and we will actually um, come back to you as soon as possible if let's say uh, it is a question to be answered. If let's say it is a question that benefits everyone, we might actually record a training video to address those questions and make it available to all the viewers out there. So thank you so much for watching this video from Accentuate. I hope to see you soon. Thank you so much.